Shalom. Welcome to OCN Broadcasting. We are so excited that you had joined us today. My name is Pastor Ruth, and the name of this program is called Hebrew, uh, River of Life Hebrew Studies. This is our Hebrew school here at OCN. This is our yeshiva. And we're actually going to be uh, looking into and learning some of the uh, alphabet. Okay, so if you're interested in that and you know other people are, Call them, text them, get them watching OCNbroadcasting.com, or you can go on your Roku, however you want to view us today, or Galaxy 19. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the history, the recent history of the Hebrew language. You know that one of the prophecies in the scriptures talks about the Hebrew language being restored. And Hebrew is a pure language, and it's called the pure language in, his, in uh, the scriptures. So I'm going to read for you the prophecy that uh, Zephaniah prophesied that this language would be restored. And this is the only language that has been restored. There have been many other ancient languages, and those languages haven't been restored to their full language like the Hebrew language has. So it is a direct and specific prophecy of what God said he would do in the end time, just like God said that Israel would become reborn as a nation. And now Israel is a sovereign nation among the nations of the world. And the language is Hebrew. King David could walk the streets of Jerusalem and speak the language of Hebrew. Okay, um, in Zephaniah 3, verse 9, I'm going to read this for you if you want to look it up. It's in uh, the, uh, Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 9. For at that time I will change the speech of the peoples to a pure speech, and that all of them may call upon the name of the Lord and serve him in one accord. So a little bit about the history. After the destruction of the temple in 70 AD, most of the world population whose language was Hebrew, they were either killed or they were deported into slavery by the Romans. During the second century, the center of Jewish life shifted. It shifted from Jerusalem to Galilee. And with the mixed population, they spoke Arabic and Greek. Through, though Hebrew was no longer used in the regular uh, you know, conversation, but they still used Hebrew in the study of the scriptures, the Jewish people. So then uh, moving on toward the 18th century, uh, the close of the 18th century, that period was called the Enlightenment period. And the speech in Europe was mostly Yiddish. So you might ask me, you probably heard the word Yiddish. I speak a little bit of Yiddish. This is a little bit of Yiddish. Okay, so what is Yiddish? I'm going to tell you. Yiddish is derived from medieval German, and it is written in a Hebrew alphabet. Okay, so they use the Hebrew alphabet, and it's composed from medieval German, but it also has elements of Hebrew. It has elements of Russian. It has elements of Polish and elements of English. So you put that all together and shake it up and you have Yiddish, okay? So the Enlightenment period, remember, this is the end of the 18th century. Also prepared a way for the Jewish national movement called Zionism. So again, I'm going to ask you, what's Zionism? People ask me these questions, that's why I'm telling you, so you can have the answers for them. Zion is an age-old name for Jerusalem, the land of Israel, and the land of Israel. Zionism is the national liberation movement of the Jewish people who sought to restore freedom and independence in their ancient historical homeland. And there was a man that was called the father of Zionism, and his name was Theodore Herzl. He founded modern Zionism movement in 1897. So we know that Rome tried to obliterate the Jewish state in the first century. But unlike other nations, the Jews survived. They went into exile, but they survived. And they never lost their attachment to their ancient land. And we know why. God has a covenant with them. 
God made a covenant with Abraham. And this is an eternal covenant that God made with them. Even though through some of their sin and some of their ways they went into exile, but God always had them destined for the land. And he one day would bring them back, and he has. And the land is flourishing, and the language is flourishing. So I want you to learn the language, and I want you to discover some things that God had to say to you through that language. In the late 1800s, Hebrew began to be spoken as a daily language by young Jews from Eastern Europe who had settled in Israel and worked to develop their country. And there was a man called Eliezer ben Yehuda. He lived from the 1800s to 1922, and he was called the father of modern Hebrew. He forbade his children to speak anything but Hebrew. And then the Hebrew started to be taught into the schools. So even before the establishment, the reestablishment of the state of Israel in 1948, the language was being used. And with the influx of the Jews from Europe and the Middle East, the Hebrew language began to be a unifying factor, and it became the mother tongue of the younger generations of Israelis. Hebrew, which had been a language of the book for so many years, is now a living language, just as the prophet Zephaniah had prophesied. King David could walk the streets and speak Hebrew. Praise the name of the Lord. Okay, we are going to go to our actual learning the Hebrew language lesson today. And we're going to go to Hebrew language, and we're going to go to the first 10 letters. And what I'm going to do is have you look at these first 10 letters, and I'm going to say them in Hebrew so that you can actually know how to speak it and how the sound of each of the letter. And this uh, Hebrew is an alphanumeric language. That means each of the letters has a number attached to it. Okay, so the first letter in the alf Hebrew alphabet is the Aleph. That's number one. And then we have the bait and the vait. Now that bait will have a dot in it. I'm going to show you in a moment. I'm going to show you on my little board. But I'm going to go through this list first, and then we'll, we'll show you how the bait and the vait are different. And then we have gimel. That's number three. Dalet, number four. Hey. Hey is a guttural sound. Hey. Hey. And it's number five. We have vav. It's number six. We have zayin is number seven. We have chet. There's another guttural sound. Chet is, is number eight. We have tate. That's number nine. And yud is number ten. It's the smallest letter in the Hebrew alphabet. Okay, I'm going to show you this board because there are some things I want you to look at with these first ten letters. And I want you to look at this. Now, I'm going to go over here to the bait. Do you see that? Some of these have like a dot in the middle. That's going to be the bait. That's going to be the B sound, okay? And then this next one does not have a dot in the middle, and that will be a V sound, like Victor, V, okay? So um, this one will have a B sound, bait, and this one will have a V sound, bait, okay? Now, coming on over here, I'm going to have you look at some of the vowels. The Hebrew language is a consonantal language. It's made up of consonants. And the only way you can tell how to pronounce the words is to have these little uh, uh, symbols underneath them. Now, this one that looks like a little T or a little cross under here is a kamatz, and that is uh, the ah uh sound. And then we have another one over here. It looks like a little... Uh, a line, just a line, and that is also an ah sound. And then we have another one over here that is a dot. That's going to give you the e sound. So over here we've got ah with the aleph, ah, ah, and e. And with the bait we have ba. Remember the bait is the v like Victor, va, and then we have the B sound with the dot underneath it, okay? And then we have the gimel, which is the third letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And so we have ga, ga, and then we have ga, 
and we have gi, and then we have a different one. This dot is above it, kind of up in the corner, and that's going to give you the o sound, holam. That's going to give you the o sound, okay? So that would be go. So at the beginning, we have ga, ga, gi, and go, okay? So if you can get that, take a picture of it and see if you can practice writing those words. Now, I want to erase this and I want to show you something about the alphanumeric language. Like I told you, Hebrew is an alphanumeric language. That means each of the letters has a, uh, each of the letters has a, an alphanumeric value to it. And if you would open up a calendar, a Hebrew calendar, I don't know if any of you have a Hebrew calendar, you would look at that Hebrew calendar and you would know what to say, what, what year or what day this is because of the Hebrew calendar. But I'm writing the Hebrew year 5,775 in Hebrew because that's how you would write it. Okay. Hold on for just a minute. I'm still here. Hold on. Okay, now I want you to look at this. Starting over on this side, you've got a hey, that's the number five, and they know that when it's with the actual calendar that that's going to be 5,000, and then you have the tav, which is the last letter. It's the number on that tav is 400 numerical value, and the next one is 300. That's the sheen. That's 300 numerical value. And then you have the ayin, which is 70, and then the 5. Can you add those up? You've got 5,000, then you have 400 and 300. That's 700. And you have 70, and that's 70, and then you have 5. 5,775. That's how the year would be written in Hebrew. So we have an alphanumeric language. When we go through with our different studies, we're going to be looking at different things regarding the alphanumeric language, but I wanted you to become familiar with it. Okay, so we are going to go, we've gone through the first 10 letters, and now we're going to go to the next 12 letters. I wanted to, on this episode, I wanted to give you all of the letters so that you would have them and you'd be able to look at them and see this program again. We're going to be running it again. So anyway, we've got the next 12 letters on the Hebrew alphabet and that would be the next 12 letters and that one at the top is a kaf and then that is a 20 numerical value. We have the lamet, 30 value, the mem, 40 value, the noon, the 50 value, we have the asamic, 60, we have ayin, 70, pe and fe, we have 80, we have tzadi, 90, kuf, 100, resh, 200, sheen, 300, and tav. Okay, so I gave you the pronunciations of these letters, and I gave you, you can see the design of the letters and what they look like and the names of the letters on this page. So you can take a picture of that page. Now, I want to show you some more things on my board from that page. So we are going to look at this board again, and I'm going to show you some things from this page. Okay, we have... The, um, some letters in the Hebrew alphabet, some of the letters in the Hebrew alphabet, when they are at the end of the word, they're called the final form or sophit form, okay? And so when these, there are five letters in the Hebrew alphabet that when they're at the end of the word, they look different. Now they sound the same, but they just look different, and I'm going to tell you which ones they are. Okay, we have the cough. Now, we have the um, one has a dot in it, one doesn't, and then we have a final form of the cough. Okay, that's the cough. And then we have the mem. Is this the mem? And we have the noon. The noon, 
and that is this way normally, but at the end it looks like this, and then we have the pe and fe, and then we have the zadi, zadi. Okay, stay with me now. You're going to learn something. We've got the pe, and we got the fe, and we have the final fe, and then we have the zadi. And then the final tadi, okay? Okay, I want you to look at this now. I wrote it all out for you. And let's look at this, okay. We have at the f top here. I did the, the letter, the first letter, which way am I going here? The first letter is the cough, cough, like you're coughing, cough. And it has a little dot in the middle. Maybe you have something to cough up, okay? I'm, I'm helping you out so you can learn this language, okay? So you can learn these block letters and you can also read. Once you've learned these block letters, you can read because they're very similar to the book print. Okay, so this is cough. And this one is huff, more of a guttural sound, huff, okay? And it does not have that little dot in the middle. And then the final form is like this, okay? You just make it and go down, okay? Now the next one is going to be the mem. And you can see the mem is written like this in its regular form, like this, but in the final form, it's got a little box, okay? And then the noon, you've got the noon here. It is uh, like this in its regular form. This is the N sound, like, like no. <laughs> and then the final form, you just draw it down like this and go down a little bit below the line. And then you have the, the pay and the fay. Now the pay, they have a little penny in it, okay? The pay has the dot. Do you see the dot in that pay? Okay, that's called pay. I, I say it's a little penny in the dot because you got the pay. And then you got the fay and then the final fay, okay? And then you've got the zadi, the regular form with the zadi, and then you've got the final form with the zadi, okay? Does that help you? Well, you're going to look at it a little bit more, and then that will help you later, okay? Great. Okay, so we have uh, all the letters of the Hebrew alphabet, okay? So I want to go and I want to actually do a reading lesson with you tonight, and I want you to... Um, know what letters I'm going to be using for the reading lesson, the letters and the vowels for the reading lesson. Okay, so you, we've already told you all the letters of the language, but I want you just to be a little bit familiar with them before we go on to the reading lesson. Okay, so letters and vowels for reading lesson. And we're going to uh, show you that screen. And that's going to be the hey, the gimel, the dalet, the mem, the aleph, the sheen, the noon, the tav, the yud, the resh, and the bet. Okay? So we're going to use the hey in our reading language, the gimel. See how it, it looks on there? The gimel, the dalet, and the mem. Remember, the mem has a final form, it's a square at the end. And then we have the aleph, we're going to use that in the reading, and the sheen. And then we're going to have the noon, remember the noon has a final form, and then the tav, the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet, and the yud, the resh, and the bet. Okay, so now we are going to go to some reading practice. Now remember, with the reading practice, you are going to be going from right to left. Everything changes in the Hebrew language. Everything. You're learning a whole new alphabet. You're learning everything's new. You're having to, uh, everything's like upside down. We're going right to left instead of left to right, okay? So what I'm going to do with this uh, reading practice is we are going to um, actually uh, Say the kamat sound. The kamats is the little T that's underneath the letters. And each one of those letters, and that's the reading practice from right to left. That's the screen I need. And that is going to be um, each of the letters, we're going to say it with the ah sound. So you can get used to practicing these letters. So if I can have the next screen, Jack, the reading practice from right to left. And then we will go forward and start reading that, that reading practice, okay? So um, now when you're uh, reading this, the very first one on the right 
has got three Hebrew letters to it. We'll, we'll do those three letters first. We have the He, which would be Ha. We have the Sheen, would be Sha. And then we have the Tav, which is Ta. Okay? Now the next line, remember it's on the right, so stay with me now. Ma, A, Ga. A, Ma, Ta. That's the second word there. The third word is Ma, Da, Ha. The next word is Sha, Da, Ga. The next word is Ga, Sha, Ma. Next word is Ta, Sha, Ra. That's the Rish, the R sound. And then we have a, a, ga, ta. Then we have a, ha, sha, ta. We have ha, ga, ha, ma, ga. We have sha, ma, sha. We have ga, a, ta. We have ra, ma, sha. Okay, the next section, we're going to do something a little bit different here in this uh, last part of the page. We're going to still go right to left on that same page, and the vowel that we're going to be practicing is going to be the, the E sound. It's going to be the dot at the bottom of it. It's a, called a herk, and it's at the bottom of the letters, and all these letters are going to take on an E sound, but it's different in this reading practice. And we're going to go ahead and do this reading practice. And it's at the bottom of the page. We're starting in that line right to left. And the last letter in each of the words has no vowel, so we'll just do the sound of the letter. Meet, gish, teal, bil, nil, heel, im, shim, team, neem, reem, deet. Sheet, neat, meat, neat, heat, leet, sheen, mean, lean, niche, mish, gish. Okay, so if you've taken pictures of those so that you can continue to practice those, that's going to be awesome. Awesome. The last thing we're going to do is a couple of screens away, Jack. It's called vocabulary. I know I've got a couple of vocabulary pages, but it's going to be the very last one on this one. It's the seven page, and it starts with Abba Daddy. So if we can have that screen, I'm going to have these letters up here for you on the screen, and you are going to learn about Abba. Everybody knows what Abba is. Abba is Daddy. Abba. And then Ima. And then fish is dog. It's not a dog, it's a fish, okay? <laughs> That's how you say fish in Hebrew. And then we have woman or wife, which is isha. And we have husband or man, which is ish. And we have shabbat. And we have tov. And we have shamash, which is the servant candle. So that is your vocabulary. That is your reading lesson. You've gotten some things today. I've given you quite a bit, but I know we've been doing these sessions about once a month. And I want those of you who are really wanting and interested in the language, I think we're going to be doing some live classes here even in Los Angeles area. If you're in the Los Angeles area, the greater even Los Angeles area, we're going to be letting you know a little bit more about those classes later. And, uh, and we can do a hands-on. I'll do a hands-on with you. And, and I can look over your work, and I'll give you homework, and it'll be really an official class. But those of you that are online that are watching this, I want you to treat it like a class. And that way, you can learn it too. And um, so we're just really pleased. You can call in and ask me questions here too. I'll get an answer to you. OK, we're going to talk a little bit about the Tanakh, the Hebrew Bible. I wanted to uh, kind of give you a little bit more information in this uh, session. I wanted to give you a little bit of history of the language, and I want to give you some of the outline of the Tanakh, the Hebrew Bible. And um, the Bible, the Tanakh, is the oldest continuous living literary tradition that has never been broken. It goes back more than 3,000 years. The thing that kept all the Jewish people cohesive was that book, was the whole Hebrew Bible, the Word of God. 
This is what keeps us cohesive. This is what keeps us together because we understand and know God through the book, through the, through the Torah and through the Tanakh and through the Brit Hadashah, the New Covenant, the New Testament. All of it written by Jewish people from Genesis to Revelation. The thing that kept them cohesive in times of exile was they observed the laws of Torah and enabled them to survive the destruction of both temples. After 70 uh, AD, there was a large Jewish di diaspora, which we talked about earlier, living outside the land of Israel. And other civilizations have disappeared, but the Jewish people have survived. There's an anointing, do you know this? There is an anointing on Jewish people to love the scriptures, to comprehend, to meditate, and to teach the scriptures, the Hebrew scriptures. The scriptures are ca their call, and it is uh, God's truth. We owe our Bible to Jewish people. We, our Messiah, Jesus, Yeshua, is Jewish. The first family was Jewish. We owe everything to what God has placed into Jewish people and into the word of God. It, Israel's purpose on the earth relates to God's strategy for reviving all people. Did you know that God wants to revive all people by giving them the truth? The only way you can be revived inside is if you have nuggets of truth. If you have the word of God. If you understand what God is saying to you, if you understand who God is, if you understand his ways, if you understand how he dealt with people in the word of God, this is all in the Bible. I want you all to have a love of the word. You know, I was giving a little presentation when we had our gala, our first year anniversary, on the four cups of wine from Passover. And I had several people, uh, pastors, come up to me. One of them came up to me and she said, this makes me hungry for more. So my goal here is with you is that this class would make you hungry for more, that you would want more of God, that you would want to know him and be more intimate with him. You know, he still is visiting his people today. And I believe we're living in historical times. There's a lot going on around the world. And God wants to show us his way. and He wants to show us what he wants to complete in the world today. And uh, so what we're going to do today is I'm going to just give you a blessing. You know, this, uh, uh, we're going to go over this Hebrew Bible again in another class because I want to tell you how it breaks down into the law, the prophets, and the writings, and all of that. And I wanted to teach you rabbinic uh, w uh, ways of interpreting the Hebrew scriptures. But today, I'm just going to bless you. I want to bless you with a Hebrew blessing. I want to bless you with the anointing of God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you his shalom. His peace, his goodness, his perfection, and his redemption over every part of your life. I bless you and I bless your households. I pray for each of your households that the mercy of God would visit you and would love you and would bless you and would help you and encourage you in every way. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen. I bless you in Jesus' name. I bless you in your house today.